Hey guys, it's Sunday. Just finished a project the other day. Thought I'd share it with you. Uh, built it into a suitcase, uh, so it's nice and portable. Pretty fun. Check it out. So the idea with this guy was to create a standalone little noisemaker that uh, was laid out in a way that uh, could be understood by anybody. Because uh, most of my other projects get so weird and convoluted that I'm the only one who knows what to do. And I usually have way too many patch points with those, so the average person can't really just walk up to it and use it. I've got to like instruct them how to patch it appropriately, and I just figured I wanted something pre-patched and cool enough for me to enjoy, but uh, for somebody else to like walk up to it and start messing around with it too. So, I started this guy maybe two weeks ago because I was drinking and was just like, let's start building. So I didn't really, uh, you know, lay out my design very well, or I didn't give it a lot of thought. It was kind of just more of a experiment. I was like, I got these parts. I got the know-how. Let's just do it. And I just kind of threw it all on here. So here's the idea. Starts with a voltage sequencer. Got an on and off switch to control whether or not the, uh, the clock is stepping right here. Uh, and a reset switch. So this is based off a of 40107, uh, very similar to the Baby 10. Just steps through the uh, sequences. Uh, you control how many steps you got with this reset switch. So it just ties the output to the ground, and it stops at that switch or stops at that pin, that step. And a 40106 clock here. Very simple RC network. Uh, very simple. Next step here. Is the uh, another 40106? It's uh, just my oscillator bank. The voltages go to the voltage pin of the 40106, pin 14 of the chip, and that allows me to create a lot of wild uh, sounds. It's kind of like a uh, you know a voltage starve in a sense, but because you're getting a series of voltages, it kind of acts like a pseudo VCO in a way. So then each step is tied to an on and off switch, which connects it to a four input NAND logic gate. It's a 408 something, something up there in the CMOS series. Um, I just kind of had one laying around and I was like, I'll use it. So, uh, so I have three pins connected to each gate and there's a fourth gate and those are connected to these high and low things high and low switches which uh, tie it to either V positive or ground. Pretty simple there. Then, so you got these two gates both spitting out wacky stuff and uh, oh I forgot to mention the logic drain. So actually that logic chip has a voltage starve on it as well which um, kind of creates some more subtle chunkiness or wacky pulses. Um, it's kind of subtle, but it's it was enough for me to include it. So then you got your, your two gates spitting out crazy stuff, and you can blend in between them with this uh, potentiometer. So like there's three lugs of this potentiometer. You got gate one, gate two, and then this is your output. So whoosh, that is going into a 4040 divider. And I set up a lot of the output steps to these uh, pots. So you can kind of like bring up this step and it starts blending with other stuff and it just kind of makes a crazy mangle of nonsense. And I thought that was pretty cool because it allows you to kind of play with the noise that this thing makes and shape it in a sense. But it adds a lot of like, uh, you know, just kind of shaping and you get weird rises and falls depending on what you want to do. And I thought it was chill. Kind of a, an idea a lot of other people have had. Um, it's not really a sub-octave thing, which I thought it might be. It's just kind of, you get these like steps and it just kind of adds the steps to the other steps and you get this crazy square wave nonsense. All right, then the outputs of all these divisions are connected to these sync switches, which are further connected to back to the oscillator bank. So it kind of makes a weird feedback loop. So you got a, a way to sync it with the um, 
through a diode back to the 40106 or skip the diode or don't sync at all. And that just kind of messes it up. You get a lot of variation here. Uh, this is kind of where your most significant changes come from because it starts really messing with the, uh, the 40106 oscillators. Beyond that, I have a VCO that I made uh, utilizing a very simple chip, the 4046 um, PLL, I think it might be called. Anyway, it's simple seamless chip, very cheap, like 20 cents, and uh, you can make a VCO with it. So anything you send to pin 9 of this thing uh, causes this whole chip to trip out, <laughs> and it's it's super fun. So all you need is a, a capacitor between pin six and seven, and a resistor on the R1 and the R2 pins if you want to get more into it. I just went with the R1. So this is my uh, my resistor here is this potentiometer, and it just connects right to ground and allows me to control the range. So I got super low. And then I got super high. So uh, a lot of fun little craziness right there. My tweak knob is this little mod that I like to <laughs> include where I basically take these capacitors and or this capacitor and I go to a, a potentiometer here on the center, the center lug. And then this is like a low capacitor, this is a high capacitor and both of these go right back to the other pin of the chip. So you can kind of blend between the capacitors and when you're right in the middle there, it really trips out. I thought it was fun. So that's what I like to do, call it the tweak. Then you got a little glide switch here. So if you see on uh, my little diagram, your VCO in is pin nine. This is where all your control voltages are coming from. If you add this little capacitor here, I think I used a 10 UF, that kind of holds some of the voltage in there and smooths it out a bit so it's not so eh, 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 eh. it's more like woo 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 and uh, it causes a lot of fun variations very weird uh, very fun um, so then I have my uh, control voltage selector rotary switch here it's basically off but believe it or not because it's all connected together it still has a, it's still kind of on despite me uh, disconnecting the control voltage and the ground uh, the control the second or the first control voltage point is right out of the voltage sequencer and that also turns on the power to the switch and uh, the second control voltage point is coming out of the voltage sequencer again but through a diode a little silicon diode very cheap and that kind of just gives it something else to trip out on so you've got like your standard thing and then a wackier variation or nothing very simple all of that goes back into like this uh, sound shaping section and you can turn on and off the amount of the VCO right there with this little pot um, none of this is connected to ground which I might do to kind of turn things off uh, all the way but right now things are so like the leftest most point of the pot is just kind of nothing if I connected that to ground I think I could make it more of a, you know, a true volume from zero to a hundred essentially. But right now it's, they're all kind of freaking out with each other and I kind of like that at the moment, but it's something I might change in the future. So turn up your VCO, turn up all your steps. And then I got my little sound shaping section uh, or, you know, like your effects section uh, past the kind of sound generator. So first thing I got is a simple low pass filter um, straight out of Ray Wilson's uh, rest in peace brother uh, his WSG very simple low part uh, low pass frequency <laughs> low pass filter uh, not super amazing but it gets the job done um, so you know you that kind of stuff then I have a very cool fuzz section I'm super into this and it's basically a guitar pedal effect called the Great Destroyer designed by Dwarfcraft Devices. And it's tight. It's based off a 4069 um, chip, which is kind of like a weird inverter amp chip, but still CMOS, so it all kind of messes together. 
So you got like your amount of it uh, and some other things, drive, tone, and I called this one zap. Thought that was fun. And then past that, the Mad Professor uh, delay section, which I, another guitar pedal that I really like to do. So, and this right here is my power, my little power bricks under here, or power block, I guess. And this will run off of a nine volt adapter with a center positive lug. So I basically, you know, you connect your, um, what do you call this? Your power adapter connector thing like that. Um, and it hits a, uh, a very large capacitor. I think this is 3000 UF. So you got your positive and negative, connect your 3000 UF between the two of them, then a voltage regulator, um, 7809 for nine volts. And then I had a series of smaller capacitors to help smooth out the sound. I guess it's a good practice, but you don't really need it. I don't know. I just did it to be safe. And that is that. So, oh wait, I forgot about the coolest part, the glitch vision. So series of uh, little L seven segment LEDs and uh, and this thing was super cool so found some of these super cheap there's a uh, see six pins on each side it's a total of 12 pins and um, basically I connected two shift registers 4015s to these pins and uh, so the data and the clock uh, information for these shift registers comes from the oscillators and then the output step so there's four outputs on these uh, shift registers and I just kind of soldered them to these things these little pins and then I just kind of jumped to the next one to have two of them going could have had three maybe could have had four uh, but I thought two was plenty for now but I really like this idea of driving these things with shift registers so I think I'm going to really uh, expand on this idea at some project in the future because having a visual feedback element to all this is very cool so when this thing is rocking uh, these lights just glitch glitch out and it's way chill and I'm into it and I thought that was very fun and different from me so that was a cool cool little add-on here <clears throat> Okay, let's give this thing a shot and we'll go through it. I'll put Jack. Ooh. And there we go. So I think I'll start this without stepping and we'll just see where we're at. Just using this little GoPro here so uh, we'll find out how the volumes are. But as you can see, this light starts tripping. Very cool. See, am I stepping right now? Oh, I am stepping. There we go. So, voltage starve effect as the sequencer, the voltage sequencer feeds the oscillator bank. And then, so, you know, classic stuff like this, just slamming these square waves together. Real wacky stuff. On and off switches into your logic drain. Let's see here. It's really here what that does. So that just starts gating these things, and you get some cool variation. Now remember, you got your two gates, so you can blend in between what's happening in gate A, and then there's gate B. And of course, like wacky variations between the two of them. Start potting up these different tones, or these different steps. A lot of weird stuff here. Very fun. Well, let's start stepping. Stop this clock. There we go. So now we got this thing moving, right? It's walking. Now let's start doing some syncing. Oh, don't forget, this is dancing around. Isn't that cool? Wow. I don't know. I love this kind of stuff. This is my favorite. So let's turn this VCO on. What? What's happening here? This is nuts. 
And I'm going between the capacitance values. Turn on this light. What? All right. Low pass right here. Start messing with the, the fuzziness. Lots of overdrives over here. And then, yeah, add your crazy nonsense delay. That's this little noisemaker, man. A lot of fun, a lot of weird wackiness. I'm really into it. I think future modifications, I might include a, uh, a way to get the clock out of this thing to sync it to something uh, down the road. So I'll probably just jump this, uh, this on and off switch and connect it to an output jack. And I guess the only thing I didn't really mention was uh, I really wanted this thing to the clock really slow between each step. So there's actually another divider here beyond, <laughs> right behind this uh, 40106 clock thing. So you've got your 40107, 40106, another 40106, a 408 something, another 4040, a 4046, 741 op amp filter, 4069, and your PT2399 thing. And that's it, man. I think this beast is super fun. Just listen to this crazy nonsense. Alright, let's turn off these lights so you can really see this, uh, this part right here. Ah. Alright. What a fun little box, man. I'm super into it. Alright, guys. Keep it real. Enjoy the rest of your day. <clears throat> I'm using dual colored LEDs for my steps up here. And I wired them backwards on accident. But then I was like, whatever. That's fun indifferent so they step in reverse <laughs> but it's all good um and i didn't really have anything else i just thought maybe this might be a little fantastic eh, with less light so it lights up all funky funky but yeah very chill very chill <laughs>